Hi guys, Ollie here. Welcome back to the channel once again. Now, something I get asked about all the time is what textbooks do I need to buy before coming to med school or what books do I need to be thinking about buying when I come to medical school? Because, um, you know, there are some very, very famous medical textbooks. If you pay attention to the media scene, be it Instagram, Facebook, any kind of medic social media space, you'll see endless pictures of people kind of posing with the stethoscopes on their textbooks and all that kind of thing. So you see the same few books around again and I think it's just ingrained into us that every med student needs their own brand new copy of Grey's Anatomy and uh, etc etc. So this video I'm going to try and address A. Do you even need to buy textbooks? B. If you are going to buy textbooks, what are the ones you should look for? and see, I'm just gonna make a few kind of off the wall recommendations as well. And I'm gonna break this down by the parts of the course that the textbooks will typically apply to, be it general medicine, um, anatomy, more specific physiology, things like that. So it'll just be broken down and put into sections. So the very first thing I want to address is, do you need to buy textbooks? And I think the answer to that now is a resounding, unequivocal no you do not need to buy textbooks to go to medical school. Academic textbooks are incredibly expensive and because the whole market that surrounds them makes them very expensive. As I said before, I think it's often felt that, you know, going to medical school or even just going to do any kind of degree, you should have your own copy of the core textbook. I just don't think we live in an age anymore where that's true. I'm sure historically it absolutely would have been true, but now that we have access to really good university libraries, just the internet as a whole, and not just copies of textbooks, but so many other ways of learning information. You know, right here on YouTube, the amount of free medical education material that's out there is absolutely astronomical. There are some instances in which using a textbook is maybe the best way to solve a problem or to succeed, and I absolutely agree those situations do exist. But if you need access to a particular book, often your university library is the best way to get them because they'll have loads of them if they're a high demand textbook or as is often the case you can access an ebook copy through your library for free the other way to get textbooks really cheaply is simply ask in the older years of the course for people that are selling copies of books here at warwick on the grad entry course we get advertised all the time copies of old books that the finalists are now you know when they're moving on and becoming doctors they're selling their textbooks or even people who've made it through the first preclinical year, they no longer have need of the core academic textbooks. And just looking on places like eBay, Amazon used, just places like that, there are often super, super cheap or free places to access textbooks. So basically, no, if you don't want to, I don't think that you ever need to buy a brand new copy of any textbook. So with all that said, I'm now going to tell you about my favourite textbooks, a couple of which I do own copies of, but I've never bought a brand new one. Um, mine are all secondhand. I've borrowed a lot of them for the purposes of this video. But this is going to be for the case where if you're browsing in the library looking at picking up textbooks or maybe your family want to buy you a copy of a textbook that you think would be useful, that's fine. Now I'm going to go through my favourite medical textbooks and the ones that I really recommend. If you come across them and they're cheap, I recommend picking them up. So the first category of textbooks covers your core internal medicine, the biochemistry, the essential biology and chemistry that you're going to need to get through your preclinical years at medical school. The ones here are going to be no surprise to anyone that I recommend, but they are firstly Kumar and Clark. This is the one I engage with most regularly. It's, I think, the best place to get you through your core medical curriculum. It's the big standard player in the game, so you really can't go wrong with a copy of Kumar and Clark. The other core textbook you might like if you don't get on with Kumar and Clark is Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine. I've also found that to be very useful. Then two kind of slightly more niche ones, but still recommended if you can find them cheap, are Rangendale's Pharmacology. I really dislike pharmacology um, because I just find it really dull, unfortunately, but Rangendale, I think, is the, again, the classic standard core textbook 
that goes into the right amount of detail for everything you need to know about clinical pharmacology. Then the last one of these, just again for pre-clinical years only really, is molecular biology of the cell. I did my undergrad degree at Newcastle in molecular and cellular biology, um, and this was the core textbook, molecular biology of the cell. Again, it's, it's pretty niche. There's not a huge amount of that, at least for my own course in med school. But for anyone doing biomed or who's doing a full five or six year medical degree, it might be more useful to you than it was for me. And then the last general medical book that I recommend everyone probably have a copy of if it's cheap is the Oxford Handbook of Clinical Medicine. This tiny little yellow pocket sized book you see everywhere in hospitals, not just with medical students, but doctors as well. It's a really handy, just quick reference guide for virtually anything you could want to know about, whether it's diagnostic features, side effects of drugs, or pathways for treatment, or recommendations for investigations. You really can't go wrong with having this thing by your side on the wards. So now we're getting into books that I actually have copies of, or at least I have them here with me, and this is a, as the kids would say, thick, thick book with as many C's as you like. This is Grey's Anatomy for students. As I feel Kumar and Clark is to internal medicine, Grey's Anatomy is to anatomy. There's a reason why it's the most kind of enduring anatomical textbook in the world. There are a few different versions of it. Um, the student focused version is the best one if you are looking for a copy because it often comes with the uh, online edition as well, which is worth having for reference but the core anatomy for virtually any medical school curriculum will be in some degree probably based on what's in Grey's, so you really can't go wrong. Now, just some other ones that I don't have copies of to hand, but I think are really good if you can come across them. Um, one is McMinn's and Abraham's Anatomy Atlas, I think it's called. Peter Abraham's, I believe, kind of took over anatomy teaching at Warwick. Um, some time ago. I've had the good fortune to meet him a couple of times, really, really knowledgeable anatomist, and that comes across in the book. It's a really, really handy, very image-heavy reference guide. The next two are also very image-heavy, so the next one is Human Sectional Anatomy. I can't remember the name of the authors, but that will be uh, on the screen now as well. And another one you might want to check out is Anatomy 360, which is a book that's very much aimed at giving you a 3D appreciation of the human body. That's where I think sometimes books like Grey's don't often do a fantastic job. They give you lots of 2D, very informative diagrams, but often in clinical anatomy what you need is the ability to appreciate the entire 3D structure as it sits in space. And Anatomy 360 by Jamie Roebuck is a really, really good one for that. And again, Jamie Roebuck is one of the uh, very, very good teaching staff here at the University of Warwick. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention uh, Pocket Tutor Surface Anatomy by Professor Richard Tunstall, who is the current kind of head of anatomy here at Warwick. There's a lot of emphasis on surface anatomy, at least for the Warwick course. It comes up in exams, it comes up in OSCEs. And an understanding of surface anatomy really helps when you're doing your physical examinations and thinking about where certain structures are and how you would find important locations on the body. And in terms of dedicated surface anatomy books, you're really not going to get much better than one written by someone who is a leading expert in the topic. So that's the kind of core medicine out the way. We've covered the basics of anatomy, physiology, and pharmacology in the form of Rang and Dale. The other big element to getting through medical school, as I've just kind of hinted at, is passing the physical clinical examinations, the OSCEs and the OSLAs. So again, I'm showing a bit of kind of internal bias here, but this is the first clinical skills textbook I want to talk about, Practical and Professional Clinical Skills by John Morrissey and Professor Vinod Patel. Uh, Professor Patel is the head of clinical skills teaching here at the University of Warwick. So if you're going to come here, he's in charge of setting the exams. I have a feeling like recommending his clinical skills textbook on which everything is based is not going to be a bad shout. And the thing that I quite like about this book as well is that it includes checklists um, throughout the book. So once you've kind of gone through the process, you can actually test yourself and test each other. You could photocopy out the checklists and use them to assess each other to practice. But if you're not planning on coming to Warwick, the other kind of big standard one is McLeod's clinical examination 
really there's nothing better than this if you're going to buy a clinical skills textbook. This is what I would consider to be the standard in the UK. It has absolutely everything that you would want to know in it. And again, what's really nice is it gives you anatomical explanations and diagrams for the thing you're doing and examples of signs, rashes, um, everything like that. So now I'm just going to talk about a couple of specialty books which I recommend. So these are not core medicine um, by any stretch, but if you're interested in these subject areas or you want a bit of extra help, you really can't go wrong. So the first one, is the ECG Made Easy. This again is one of the standard ECG teaching books and you can often get it super cheap now if you find it second hand. Um, I found ECGs quite difficult to begin with at first but again gives you lots of really nice diagrams with uh, lots of sample ECGs to test your knowledge because the way I feel about ECGs is that there's a very rigid and structured way of learning to interpret them and once you kind of get the hang of how the basics work they're easy marks on an exam or in an OSCE if it comes up so I really recommend getting to grips with ECGs and this is probably the best book to help you do that. Now neurology and neuroanatomy are areas which I think a lot of students find really hard in the first instance and I know I did as well um, so there are two books I want to recommend for neurology and neuroanatomy. The first is Neurology and Neurosurgery by Dr. Don Collins. It's one of the Eureka textbooks, who is quite a big uh, publisher of textbooks. Dawn teaches the neuro block here at Warwick Medical School, and this is written by um, herself. She's an expert in neurology and neuroanatomy as an academic and um, a neurosurgeon base nearby and it really covers all bases and explains the often very complex um, problems in a way that I think is very easy to understand. So that's a good place to start. And the other one is Crossman's Neuroanatomy. This is much more neuroanatomy and neurosurgery focused, but I think to be honest, having both of them together, having access to online copies made my Block 3 experience a lot easier and I continue to use them to refer to whenever I'm doing anything and um, when I'm trying to get into neurosurgery all the time. Another thing I found quite difficult in the beginning is learning to interpret radiological images and this is the best book that I've found to do that, uh, Recognising the Basics Learning Radiology by William Herring. And what I specifically like about this book is, as with all good medical teaching, it starts with a focus on what is normal. And you can see here, this is just looking at the normal cardiac anatomy on a chest x-ray. So you start with the basics, this is, you know, these are the structures you should be looking for, and then here are why they might be deranged. So these last few books that I want to talk about are just kind of off the wall, other books that I've found really useful if you come across them, but they're absolutely not essential by any means. So the first ones are the 100 Cases In book series. These are almost like being quizzed by um, by a consultant on the wards. They'll give you a patient presentation, sort of say, what do you think it is? And then they'll guide you through what the patient actually has and how you should manage them, how you should differentiate it from other conditions. And on a similar vein, the Crash Course series of books, these are all split into lots of different books based on specialty. So there might be ones in dermatology, pediatrics, neurology, cardiology. Um, if you're into a particular area of medicine and you're wanting a bit of a challenge, they're a really good place to go and get that. There's a few from the Made Ridiculously Simple series. So I think there's Clinical Pharmacology and Neuroanatomy um, Made Ridiculously Simple. I think those are the ones I've read. I don't know whether there are others. Um, but they're really good as well. For certain more complicated things, it's really good at making them ridiculously simple and using lots of good analogies to help explain them. And then uh, one that's relevant to me, I'm about 90 days out from sitting my second year exams, which will be the last ones I sit before finals. Can you imagine that? Is the complete SAQ study guide. Um, med school exams are often a mix of multiple choice and short answer questions. There's usually no extended essays. Um, if anyone's worried about that. But SAQs are a bit of a weird beast. You have to be very prescriptive with your answers and the complete SAQ study guide 
is a great way to get used to the type of answers that you're meant to give for these situations. So that's it guys, that's my look at the best medical textbooks that I recommend if you can pick them up cheap. I'm gonna reiterate one more time, you do not need to buy medical textbooks. I really, really fervently believe that. All of the ones that I've talked about are great. If someone wants to buy you a gift, or if you come across them used or very cheap, or if you simply have kind of extended interest in the subject area. Like, I'm really into my anatomy. A copy of Grey's is something I might be willing to spend 50 or 60 pounds on, except I'm a poor student, so I'm not gonna do that. But you see my point. Buy them if you're interested, buy them if they're cheap. Don't ever feel pressured to spend lots of money on expensive textbooks. It's a waste of time and money. But I'd love to know down in the comments do you have any textbooks that you'd recommend that I've not talked about or which textbooks on my list have you found indispensable in your med school journey? Take care guys, be sure to go and check out postgradmedic.com for more videos and resources just like this and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now.